after sort of joking about doing a bunny a day for a year, it became a real idea. And when I found out that the Chinese New Year was the year of the rabbit, I decided I would, I would give it a try. The very first bunny I decided to do was a yin-yang bunny because it reflects the Chinese philosophy of yin and yang and, and I figured the year was going to be a bit like that where some days would probably be pleasant and fun and easy to do a bunny and other days were just going to be difficult. An event that caught my attention in February was when Egypt threw a, overthrew their dictatorship um, in search of freedom. It was a, a, an important thing that happened in history and I wanted to record that and I consequently made the Freedom Bunny. In March in Hawaii, we had a tsunami. It was a result of that Japanese earthquake that happened. And it was uh, a big deal here, and a lot of things were destroyed. And so March was focused on the tsunami, and also on the 16th, I did a radiation bunny because of all the radiation that had um, happened from the Fukushima plant in Japan. My aesthetics were most influenced by the funk movement. The funk movement was happening in Northern California and I lived in Northern California. I was going to high school and I was very into ceramics and very aware of what was happening socially in our world. The Vietnam War was going on. Uh, there was fighting against social injustice. Uh, and my mom also spoke in my social studies class at that time and it was the first time I heard the whole story from my mom about what happened to her when she was uh, in Auschwitz as, uh, in the Holocaust. It was a, a huge influence on my life. And the people who influenced me the most were Marilyn Levine with her Trump de Loyal work, which I, I loved and tried to emulate visually. Um, and people like Richard Notkin who made social commentary in an important part of their work. At one point I remember reading that he said he wanted to save the world with a teapot. I thought that was a wonderful sentiment. And Bob Arneson was working at that time and making his statement with his Moscone bust. And all of this was going on when I was coming into my formative years and very aware of social injustice and from my mom, I had learned a phrase called tikkun olam, which means you need to make the world a better place and to fix and repair the world. So I wanted to try and use my art and use my gift uh, to repair the world and to use it to fight social injustice. In April, I was starting to really listen to the voices in my head. And as I was seeking more ideas for the bunny heads, I decided to use that as an idea in itself. And so the April 13th bunny is called Voices in My Head. In May, I went to Hungary to do a residency at the International Ceramic Studio. And I was reading a lot of books about Hungary and Romania, which is where my parents are from. And the books I was reading were about Dracula. And that resulted in a couple of bunnies in May 
that were based on Vlad Tepes, who was Dracula. And on the 11th, I did a bunny called Don't Bat an Eye. On the 23rd, I did a, a bunny called Rabat. By June, I wasn't even halfway done and I was starting to wonder how I was going to finish this. How I was going to have enough ideas for the whole thing. I really felt like I'm toast. And that became an idea for a bunny head. The first time I encountered clay was in kindergarten. I remember they brought in this muddy stuff and it was all malleable and cool and we had to press our handprints into it. And I just loved it. It was like, it was so neat to play with. And then we got to crimp the little edges and make it into an ashtray because every kindergartner needs an ashtray, right? So I loved playing with it, but then they took it away and I, you know, we didn't see it for a couple of weeks. And when it came back, it was really ugly. It was kind of pink and it was hard, but it was, you know, very, um, I just didn't like it. It didn't feel good. But they had us put this stuff on it, this powdery, liquidy stuff that was bluish. And, uh, you know, I put it all over it like they to told us to, but I wasn't very impressed with the whole thing. And then they took it away. And when it came back, it was amazing. It was blue and shiny and waterproof and hard. And I could hardly believe that something that I had made with my own hands that was so malleable could turn into something as hard as a rock. Anyway, I was hooked. And then every summer I wanted to take ceramics classes um, for summer school. The days when uh, summer school was in Richmond and you could take whatever you wanted just for the fun of it and I took ceramic classes all the time. July brought some different things. Um, I had a cold. I wasn't feeling very well in July, so July 7th ended up being a head cold bunny. And I was also starting to juggle all the different things that I had going on, which were the bunny heads and dealing with the calendar and also dealing with my regular sculptures, which I was doing of these baby nation sculptures. So that resulted in a bunny that was called the juggler that had the, the baby, the, bu the baby, <laughs> the bunny, <laughs> and the calendar all being juggled. In August was the flight of the last space shuttle from NASA. And I thought that was a major historical event and I wanted to record that in my bunny heads. So um, August 27th is Shuttle Bunny. In September, I found out I was going to have to have ankle replacement surgery, so that was reflected in the What's Up Doc bunny.
I've known I wanted to be an artist in second grade. I won a poster contest in second grade, and it was the first time I had been validated for something that I could do. I felt like I could do art. Never so good at math, but I could do art. And uh, so I always took art classes as much as I could when I was a kid. And in high school, I got pretty serious about it. I was the art geek in high school, and the teacher took me under his wings and helped me, taught me things that he didn't teach the other kids, like mixing glazes and how to fire the big gas kiln. And it was neat to find something that, that worked for me that I felt like I really could do. And then after high school, or at the end of high school, when I was a senior, I won the Bank of America Award for Art. And that, again, validated me in terms of what I was able to do. And so when I went off to college, um, I had an agreement with my parents because my parents, being Holocaust survivors, didn't want to see me be an artist. They were afraid that I wouldn't make enough money to live and to eat. So the agreement was they would put me through school if I became a high school teacher. So I went to USC and I studied art, fine art, under Susan Peterson and majored in, or focused in ceramics and, uh, and eventually became a high school ceramic teacher. By October, we were starting to see a lot of results from the Fukushima meltdown and that resulted in the bunny for October 5th that was the post-nuclear bunny. November 22nd brought about the Lifesaver Bunny, because at that point, it was almost the end of the year and I was seriously running out of ideas. I was just feeling like, somebody please send me a Lifesaver. By December, I was pretty sick of bunnies. So the last week in December, all the bunnies are dead. And I have the hung bunny, the suffocated bunny, the burnt bunny. And finally, by December 31st, it was, stop the bunnies, I want to get off. I did it. It was an amazing experience. It really put a whole year of my life into perspective. Oh, I love all the tools at Ensika.
Clay is my life. I love clay. I eat clay. It gets into my coffee cups and I drink it. <laughs> 